Yeah, Coach, um, uh, how the preparations go for Jordan Love and Packers and the similar job? weapons they've been stockpiling in the last couple of drafts. Yeah, uh, good football team for sure. Good offense, um, well coached, good scheme. Um, they got the whole package. Um, you know, we talked about last time it's going to be focused on uh, the Falcons, on us, on our defense, our players, and, and what we do. Um, you know, but there are cert certain things that we have to prepare for that they do that they cause problems within the scheme and, you know, some matchup things like that. And so it's going good. Um, We'll go out there, walk through and practice later today, and, and uh, you know we just keep stacking days and get better than we did uh, yesterday. That's that'll be the goal for today. When you look at the maybe difference in what you guys were doing the first half to second half last week, mm -hmm. was there a fundamental change in what in how you were approaching things, or not really? I mean, we just stayed the course, you know, just. Look, it was our first time out there all together. You know, staff, players, you know, everybody. And, um, you know, we just, you know, one play at a time mentality. Um, thought the coaches did a great job and players in the, in the locker room at the halftime. I mean, on top of, you know, some of the things that were happening and the details within the game and the guys were really engaged and uh, guys play, our guys play tough and, and uh, they play a smart football game. Um, but all the credit goes to those guys. I mean, they, they really, you know, got together, and not that the first half was totally, you know, out of, out of control, but, you know, it, there was a, you know, hey, let's pick it up in the second half. Let's continue to, and that's what you want, you know, just continue to win it in the fourth, you know, those type of type of things. And um, it's kind of what you saw, uh, I think, when you look back and you watch the tape and, you know, just how our guys performed and, and uh, executed, you know, within the calls and the plan. Uh, in terms of the defensive line rotation, mm -hmm. is, was that pretty much true? I think it was two thirds, one third, really, that first unit and that second unit. Is that ideally in your head how you want that to go? Or? Yeah, it just depends on game. That's a, it, each game is a is a individual basis, you know. And so uh, we obviously like in an ideal world 50-50. but sometimes it doesn't get like that. Sometimes it'll go like it was last game, and sometimes it can go the other way. So it's just kind of you know how, how the game is going and and how we see. Uh, you know, just as the rotation in the week, the plan. When you have a lead in, in the, uh, like late in the game, like how do you think that you guys operated when you're up by one score and then you're up by two and it's your job to kind of close this thing out? How would you assess how, how, how your unit did in that uh, situation? Um, well, starting on the sideline, the guys, just when you, you know, walk down, you know, from the secondary, the linebackers and the D-line, they were – they wanted to be in that situation. Like you can feel the energy, you can feel the confidence uh, on their face, uh, how they were playing, the confidence, their technique. Um, you know, and so it gave you confidence. But hey, you know, our guys, yeah, they're ready to get out there and, and close this thing out and finish strong. Um, you know, again, credit to the to the players. I mean, they they really did. Uh, they came to play. Uh, you know, they played tough. They played hard. Um, you know, we want to be physical and violent in everything that we do and attacking and, and felt that, you know, it, it pec picked up as the game kept going. What makes Jesse Bates a talented football player off the field? He's, he's off the field. Jesse's a, he's a great person. He really is. Uh, he cares. He's a good teammate. Uh, cares about his, you know, people around him. Um, you know, players, coaches. Um, you know, he wants the best for everybody. You know, he's a very uh, selfless uh, player and, and person and that, you know, he's always, you know, trying to bring a guy up or around and, you know, continue to get everybody better. Uh, and you appreciate that, you know, he's the same guy every day. He's got a smile on his face. He's ready to go to work, you know, those type of things. And then when he gets into the grind and whatever we're doing, you know, there's a, hey, we're going to work now. Like, it's time to go. Um, off the field is the same thing, you know. You see him around the building. You see him, uh, just how he handles himself. It's uh, it's very impressive. Perf true, true professional. He obviously had all those stats, right? But just in terms of how, he, yeah, like maybe how, like how he helps or shades or like, are there ways to not quantify but just acknowledge like what he does in terms of what doesn't show up in the numbers during the course of the game? Sure. I mean. <clears throat> Look, if every game he can play like that, you know, have those numbers, that'd be great. You know, we'd be sitting up here uh, with a smile on our face just about every week. Um, 
you know, but some of the things that he does, you know, behind the scenes, the confidence, uh, he's been in the big moments before. And so there's a calming, um, there's something calming being around him. You know, he's, he's never uh, in overreacting or, you know, it's he's like out of position. You know, he's, he's very, uh, he's steady. You know, again, it's the feel we see Jesse, it's the same person, the same player. Every single day he brings the same uh, energy, work ethic. You know, he's an extremely uh, smart football player. And, he's, and so when he, it's every day. And so there's not, a, you know, ups and downs. And, you know, he's steady. And, and uh, you appreciate that just being around him. And I know his teammates appreciate that as well. He's, he's had a lot of success. He's played a lot of years, you know, and so, you know, guys are, they'd like to get to be, you know, 15, 16, you know, however no, how long he plays, you're <laughs> that, you know, and, you know, so they'll see him out doing extra things and they'll say, hey, I would like to do that too. And, um, you know, they're really listening to what he's saying. I mean, he's had such a great career everywhere he's been. He's made such an impact that uh, he's doing the same thing here. Um, you know, he played a, a really solid football game. You know, he really did. He uh, maybe the numbers or whatever, and numbers, whatever. The biggest and the most important thing is winning, and and he affected, you know, the game. Uh, and that's what you know we want to do up front is affect the game. Um, and so when the guys see him doing those things, you know, on the tape, and they said, all right, you know, so I'm going to work a little bit harder. Or I'm going to kind of do the things that he was doing. Um, you know, it, it just helps overall within. You know the position room, you know, and the whole unit. Did you know him much at all before he ended up here? Just on tape, I mean, you know, just, just, there wasn't like there was no personal relationship before. Because there, has he influenced you in some ways? I, that might be a weird question. No, like here, here's the thing: like he sees you're always you're always learning, right? And so you may see thing one see something one way, and then he said, "Well, I see it like this." And then we'll have a conversation. Well, why did you see it like this? And then he'll he'll explain himself, and he'll be like, you know what? Okay, I see what you're talking about. You know, it, it just um, you know, player's perspective type of deal. And and so there's a lot of uh, dialogue of, hey, I see it like this, or you know, and and that helps within you know just the conversation and in the room and and uh, you know as the unit and coaching those guys and just you know keeping. I think we're always trying to evolve, right? And so. Um, again, he's had a lot of success, and he's done s certain things a certain way. Um, and some of the things are, hey, we see eye to eye, and then there's other things. Oh, well, you kind of like what you're doing here. Let's implement that and coach the guys in this, you know, whatever, the pass rush or a run stun or something like that. And so that that's definitely helped. What kind of accomplishments under sacks in the National Football League? Oh. Um, it's a big accomplishment. Yeah. It is. Um, Particularly as the game has evolved and how fast the ball is coming out. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Now, you're seeing more passing attempts, but, you know, the time to throw has come down. You know, and you're not seeing this seven step drop and, you know, these deep routes, you know, and uh, long developing plays. It's more of a quick passing game uh, or they're maxing it up to take some shots and things like that. Uh, a lot of movement passes. And so the game has changed. Uh, even from when he first started playing. And so 100 sacks is, and the career that he's had, I mean, it's a, it's a huge deal. I mean, it, it really is. Um, it's extremely impressive. Uh, and it's it's not just like one year. It's it's his whole, that, that the impressive thing is how long he's been doing it at such a high level. That's the real impressive thing. And the 100 sacks is just a number of just to uh, magnify what we just talked the the entire career of, you know, uh, playing at such a high level, uh, but yeah, it's it's just to be around him and and you know hear his thoughts and what he says and, and you know how he plays. It's it, it is very impressive. He said he might have been. He said he felt like he might have been pressing a little bit last week for number one hundred. Did you see any of that on film, or did you think that he was just? No, I mean there are some certain things he said in the game that uh, keep just between us. But he was ready to go. Like he was fired up. Like he wanted to be out there and. Um, and that was pretty cool, you know. A guy, 
uh, still wanted to get out, you know, even, you know, in certain situations where oh, man, I want to get out there. I want to, I, you know, and you're listening to me like, all right, you know, uh, and so that part of it, I, I was really, because we haven't, that was our first game together to see what he was like. Uh, he's fiery game day. It, love it. Like it fired me up. Like I was excited. So one of the things that uh, uh, our coach talks about all the time is, you know, there's everybody's a starter and, and in camp and, and um, through practice and everything is, you know, all these guys have had uh, on the entire team have had a ton of reps. And so um, we have a plan, um, but it's a plan for every player. You know, if one guy's down, hey, look, we, we're, we're, we're uh, coaching everybody else, even, you know, practice squad or whatever. They're a starter because it's such a long season, you know, and you, you play a long time and a lot of things can happen. And so our mentality as coaching staff is, and this is from Art from the top, is, hey, you know, coach them all the same, get them all ready to play. And if something happens, man, next man up mentality, and here we go. And so that'll be the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just it's it's just a next man up, like you know, like Trey this last game, it, you know, it, or whoever's at that position. You know, we're treating him everybody as a starter, and here we go. You know, so if Jeff plays great, if he doesn't, next man up, here we go. I guess what I'm getting at is, I mean, obviously guys end up being starters for a reason, and you know, I've talked to guys, and a lot of those next men up end up being expectations. But there are certain things I guess that Jeff can do that maybe other guys can't. Does that change? I guess what I'm getting is. Does it change maybe how you can call a game if he's able to? Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll stay with the plan um, and just kind of go through it like that. It would be great to have him out there. And if it doesn't, then we won't, we won't bat an eye. Your coach, how has technology uh, aided uh, you all in coaching and teaching and using Zoom and uh, the various uh, technology aids that are available to you now that probably weren't there when you started? Sure. Um, well, it, it definitely in studying the opponent has helped. Uh, but in terms of coaching players, I mean, there's, you know, see it, walk through it, you know, and then go practice it, you know, those type of things. Put it on the board. And I think sometimes we can get lost in an iPad or an iPhone, and, and it's just old school. You know, hey, we're, here it is. Draw it up on the board. You know, everybody get up and, you know, explain why we're doing something. Let's go walk through it, and then let's go practice it. And so um, just feel – you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. That, that's just the best way um, <clears throat> that we've done it. And I know everybody, you know, Jerry and Jack, everybody has their own flavor of how they coach. And, and uh, but just feel like that's definitely what you, the, the question, definitely within the breakdown, studying your opponent. I mean, there's so many camera angles and things like that. You can see a lot more. Uh, but in terms of just a implementing, you know, here's what we're doing defensively or, uh, you know, whatever, a pressure, you know, coverage, you know, like to go through the process of put it on the board, go walk through it, and then we go practice it. Anything else? Great, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, All right, see you next time. Could you discuss the play of Desmond Ritter in the opener and what are you all uh, building on for yeah. Sunday game? So first and foremost, uh, the job of the quarterback as well as the other players around him is to go in, in the right area and score points. And I thought that was a uh, that was a positive for us uh, when he had the opportunity in the red area. Uh, we had touchdowns instead of uh, missed opportunities. Um, but yeah, there's stuff to improve on for all of us, coaches included. Um, the one thing, you know, I thought Des did a good job of getting himself into a rhythm in the second half. I believe it was like seven of eight in the second half, just getting himself completions um, and guys making plays for him as well. Uh, and that's it. And again, the game called for for us. Right to make sure that we played in a way, especially in that second half offensively, right? We did a good job of, of moving the football and then scoring when we needed to in the red area. But ultimately, you just like the flow in which those guys were feeding off each other, especially in the second half. Look, the first series of the game, I don't think I've been a part of uh, a quarterback catching the first play. Um, I actually did that as a player uh, when I played, uh, and that's not a good outcome. He knew uh, right away that was probably not the right thing to do. Uh, but natural instincts sometimes take over. But, you know, that's not the flow you want to start with. And I think it's, you know, we are in and out of rhythm in the first half. In the second half, I thought we gained more rhythm. He said rhythm and uh, coach said spacing. Uh, are those two things got some other? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's, that's 
a lot, especially when you go into the pass game, right? You want to have the, the, the spacing needs to be in the, in the right situations for guys to be able to uh, cause issues for the defense, right? If everybody's too close together, then one guy can cover two. Um, and the same thing goes for the quarterback, right? He needs to be able to uh, see the field a certain way with his eyes, uh, try to manipulate coverage. Um, but ultimately, we just need, right, our rhythm is how we play, our pace, everything else. And again, going out there and correcting the mistakes and, and trying to be better uh, this week. Is that something you, know, you joke about the catch and your own pass thing? Do you actually teach that of like knock it down? It yeah, you have that conversation for sure. I mean, I think that conversation happens from literally gone. I think my son in the eighth grade probably has had that conversation with his coach. Um, but yeah, that's something It's sometimes, right, that ball is up in the air. The first thing you're thinking about is kind of like making sure that doesn't get intercepted, right? Um, the next thing is like where you are spatially around anybody else. And in split second, right, obviously that was a, a situation where, you know, he caught it. And, um, you know, it's not like you sit there and you pound over and over and over it. But, yeah, it's a, definitely a coaching point and it's something to learn from. Do you, believe, do you believe that there are players who have a certain knack for scoring touchdowns in the red zone, a certain some it factor, or is that overblown? Well, I, you know, that's it's probably – Interesting question, how you put it in terms of the knack of it. I do think, right, there are certain guys that um, when I was a player, right, there were certain guys teammate-wise that you could just tell, right, came to life around the, the red area, right, for the touchdowns. Um, but that didn't mean they didn't try further out, right? But, no, again, I think it's, you know, sometimes it's here's – what I, here's what you look for sometimes, right, the off schedule. Like you break down red area offenses, most in the NFL who have high rates of touchdowns. Sure, there's some great design and some on rhythm throws or some runs that just hit. But ultimately, there's probably a decent percentage that is off schedule, right? And it's those guys who have that spatial awareness to move with the quarterback, for the quarterback to move, right? And then find those soft areas. So there's a little bit of that, right? When you're talking about that knack, uh, that spatial awareness. Um, understanding where the open space is. Um, but I think some of it too, right, is um, by design, um, who the ball you know, ends up going to by coverage. And sometimes, right, as we sit here and you design a play, for instance, right, and you're saying, okay, you know, we're thinking you know, what we might get down there. You design a play, and then ultimately what you have to have within that play, right, Josh, is answers for the quarterback if you're not getting the premier coverages or whatever you think you might get. And sometimes the intent of where the ball was supposed to go when you put that play up, right? They don't give you that premier look or that coverage to dictate the ball there. The worst thing I think some quarterbacks can do is just force it no matter what, right? And it might be because that's what, you know, we said we were throwing the ball that way, that's where we're going, or maybe it's a certain person. Right? Then ultimately what happens, right, for quarterbacks when they start to force it to one person is now they become tunneled with their vision. And then ultimately, they no longer see anything. Because there is a point from a quarterback standpoint where you can actually see too much, right? You're feeling way too much, you're seeing too much. Then there comes a point where you really don't see anything but your one player that you're looking for, and therefore you have no feel around you. So when you talk about you know, the knacks and who gets it and who doesn't, and ultimately, like, if you play the play true, run or pass, right? And you don't try to force the outcome, I think it's it goes where it's supposed to go, if that makes sense. Uh, in terms of like we're talking about knack and red zone and, and as a CPU, how do things change when he comes back? I mean, providing he comes back this week. Yeah, I won't. Yeah, again, I won't speak about when he's coming back um, or any of that nature. But for us, right? It's again, you're you're trying to put if it's CP, if it's any other one of our guys that. You know, we're trying to get the football to. Um, ultimately, it's you're trying to put them in the best position, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, like from us as coaches, right? We try to design plays, run and pass that allows us to get some form of an advantage. Hopefully, you start with the pre-snap advantage, and then you gain that right with the post-snap. And so, whoever that player is, right? You're hoping when he receives the ball, either pass or run, that that advantage is gained. And again, if it's not, right, we have to take a self-evaluation of ourselves and ask why wasn't that as coaches, right? Is it fundamentals or is it design? And then you kind of work your way from there. 
but to me, regardless of who's out there or who's not out there, um, it's about making sure that we give the players an advantage when they get the football. Was there anything within that, the, the, the uh, game tape or something that you've seen during camp where you would say to yourself, I don't think that, 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 uh, that uh, 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 Tyler would have done that last year? Like, was there something where you could say, he's evolved, he wouldn't have done that as a rookie, but now he's learning or he's growing? Sure. Uh, you know, I think with him in particular, but for other guys, right? I think you've seen a, a, a growth in terms of maturity of their next step in the National Football League from their first year and their second year, second to third, and then so on from there. Um, with Tyler in general, like his intent, the way he sees it, he trusts his instincts. Um, he trusts the guys around him. And again, in, when you talk about the run game in particular, and I know we've all said this up here, but you know what's, what's really cool to see when you put the film on is the effort and the intent and the finish of everybody around, right? In, the, in a play that gets brought up, right? And, and thankfully that it, it did not occur, right? And there was a penalty on it was on the Bijan fumble, right? And who recovered that? Right? That was Caleb McGarry, right? An offense alignment recovers that ball 10 to 12, 13 yards down the field, right? It's the standard in which the finish and the effort Right, that's what you watch and you put the film on and you want that to be, like there's plays, plays, there are a lot of plays out there, right? So there's a lot of smart people in the National Football League, a lot of them. But when you watch the tape and you see guys strain and finish and they're, they're pulling for each other and they're trying to help each other, like then you've got something, right? And again, I, I know this is, I've been in this for a little bit. I get the stats part of it, I really do. But ultimately, when you sit there and you watch guys legitimately giving themselves up and running and chasing after balls, right, that are at the line of scrimmage and they're going and they recover, like that as a coach shows that those players, right, they buy in, they, they understand it takes all 11 on every play, regardless if it's a run or pass. And so when you have that and you have guys believing that and they, it shows up on film, like, it's a, great, it's a great thing to build off of because there's visual evidence of why. And I think sometimes there's lip service and everything else, but when you see stuff like that, and that's just one play. There's other plays that I could definitely bring up in which that was the case, right? On Bijan's touchdown, Kyle Pitts doesn't get anything in the stat book, right? That's a great play by Bijan. It's a great read by uh, the quarterback. But Kyle Pitts is sustaining a block for a good amount of time on the perimeter and doesn't allow his player to make that play, right? And, and that's what ultimately for us offensively, what you love about what you have on the guys on the offensive side is you got a lot of guys, right? They get a helmet that sure want whatever, but ultimately they want to win. Like they play for each other. And, and that's a great thing when you watch it is, is from a coaching perspective is, you know, it's, it starts from the top down. It starts from Coach Smith and what he, right, believes. And for the rest of us as coaches, what we believe, and we carry that message forward, and it goes down to the players and what they believe. But ultimately, it's what's on the tape. And Kyle will get no credit for a stat for that. But Kyle, right, helps Bijan. And then Bijan obviously does his own. But that's the part that you love when you watch us. Like, our tape, from our standpoint, is like you want that to be, right, your DNA. And that's what we're hopefully putting out each week. Coach, how have you seen um, the technology, uh, you know, grow and age you all over? Uh, and when you're coaching over the, you know, last decade or so, and, you know, y'all pretty much had to coach all one year off of technology. Yeah, right. I mean, it started with the black and white pitchers, right, that were stapled, and you hopefully were to get them. That was when I was a player. You know, you kind of, depending on when they took that picture, right, you might have a really good view of something, or you might have a really bad view of something. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, obviously we're evolving, right? We're evolving as a society, we're evolving in the National Football League. And again, the preseason we used video. And that was a couple years ago we tried that, right? During the preseason where it was live, r rewind back and watch it. But again, I think, you know, we try to become adaptable, right? Whatever we're asked or whatever we're given, we try to use it to our best of our advantage and to our use and, and see where it goes. I mean, anything could be too much, right? I mean, I, look, again, it's, how, it's, it's, like, it's like this with information, right? We get a lot of information at our fingertips, okay? And then 
a lot of people get the same information, but we, you and I might interpret that completely differently. Ultimately, it's how you interpret the information that you get. And then, from our coaching perspective, how clean and clear can you make it for the player so they can understand it, right, within a time frame that makes sense and they can go out and react to it. Not a long dissertation, right, but get to the point, clear the picture up, and let that person use that information so they can use it out there to be successful. When you talk about forcing it, how do you coach a quarterback to find that fine line between seeing too much and seeing too little? Yeah, well, it's a good question because ultimately, right, you want a quarterback to play free and you want a quarterback to trust his instincts. And the minute you start to take away those instincts by, hey, you can only do this on this or do this, on, and then all of a sudden they start to play in a box. Now, you, you give them guidelines ultimately, right, within each play. But what you don't ever want to take away is the instinct within the pocket. You don't want to make them robotic. And then ultimately, right, you're constantly training their eyes to be in the right spot so that it allows them to see enough but not try to grasp with everything that's going around them. And then, again, that's practice reps. That's talking through it mentally about what you saw and then playing it back. Um, but there is going to be never you know, a substitute for the experience in the practice or in the game. And then ultimately, right, it's those conversations that you have with the quarterback, right, where, again, you're not giving them too much information, but you want them to rely truly on what they're seeing and trust it. And sometimes, right, again, the helmet size, right, that you really see is a couple inches, right, that a quarterback can see through through his face mask. Okay, and sometimes, right, there's a guy being blown back into you, and sometimes you get part of the field, you can't all see all of it, right? So there is some of those right, interferences that occur with the vision. The last thing you want to do is make that player a robot, right, in that position, because then ultimately, right, they're no longer relying on anything that got them here, right? What got that player to this level at the quarterback spot was, yes, physical arm talent, right, everything else, the measurables, but really, right, it's the ability to not just improvise, but to feel, to see, to trust, and have conviction. And then you get those players who that grows and grows and grows, and with that grows the confidence right? every time you go out there because you're trusting your vision. Long-winded. Not sure I got you anything there, but that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, we, have, we, we, we would be remiss if we didn't ask you about B. John Robinson debut in the National Football League. Yeah, I think, you know, again, not to not to speak for him. I'm sure you guys have asked him that question and others. But look, Bijan's one of those where, um, you know, he came in. Um, he's been like that since we really gotten him in terms of uh, he understands. He's starting to understand and he's grasping uh, the aspects of being a professional. Um, you know, and again, I think there's there's natural ability that you see on film. You saw it right in the game. And there's also the mental part, which he's growing each day with. And that's with really all the young players that we have and really all the players that we have on offense, right? We press them mentally, right? Not just in the playbook, but the, the opponent they're playing. And again, Bijan or anybody else, you want to see that growth continue. And, and that's what we're, we're pushing as, as coaches. All right. Uh, just uh, uh, you know, how you felt the units played overall first time out. Uh, and you had some, uh, you had the uh, change at returner that, uh, you know, I guess I had Goodwin back there just in case on the kickoff return. Overall, special teams, yeah, Godwin. Um, overall, special teams, I thought we we did what we were um, assigned to do, what we wanted to do going into the game. We wanted to control field position, eliminate their returners, and then put ourselves in position to where we could go out there and cover kicks, whether it was punts or, you know, eliminate Blackshear when it came to the return game. There's a lot of things that we can improve on when you talk about overall protection, our coverage lanes. Um, you, know, you know, you get you, the situation with Hesse, he wasn't trying to get a horse collar penalty. Mm -hmm. He was just being aggressive, trying to leverage the football. And with the rules, they ended up in our favor, pinning them back down at the one yard line. I thought Bradley Pinion had a really good day, had three punts inside the 20 yard line with one inside the five yard line when you talk about our coverage. So there's a lot of things that we could continue to get better at. And then D-Led, you were talking about the returners. You know, uh, D Alfred played a lot of reps on defense, and we're blessed, you know, starting with Terry and our scouting department and Coach Smith and how we um, organized our, our 53, 48 man roster. We, we're blessed with the opportunity to have a couple returners on the roster. 
So we feel comfortable and we're confident with anybody that we put back there as a returner, whether it's kickoff return or a punt return. You were in Detroit and saw Mason Crosby for years and have him anymore. Does that change? Maybe this is a loaded question, but does that change how you approach stuff when it's a rookie kicker, a new kicker, a different kicker? Week by week, whether the guy's a rookie or if he's in his 12th, 13th, 14th season, it's all about how they operate, how they kick, where's the launch point, um, where their tendencies are, where they're great at, you know, yard line when it comes to kicking, field goals, uh, their, their, you know, steps and approach when it comes to kickoffs. Do you have a certain approach when they kick one way in comparison to they kick another way? What's their distance, their hang time? So I, we don't get fixated on more so the, hey, is he a first year player or if he's a 12 year, 12th year player. We just look at their ability and their skill set and how they complement their coverage and what can we do to make them play, you know, you would say left handed when it comes to, you know, coverage, when it comes to return game, when it comes to blocking kicks. And you mentioned, you know, obviously you guys had to flip D and Scotty with his snaps. Is that, do you have to flip a returner like that? Does, again, that change any sort of thought process or strategy? Because every guy's skill set is at least a little bit different back there. Yeah. Uh, week in and week out, when we go to formulate our game plans, we, we always consider who our returners are, what they feel comfortable with doing, what they excel at doing when it comes to certain returns, how they feel the ball, where they feel the ball at. And then that helps me as a coach uh, have a better and clear understanding of what the calls I'm going to have going into the game, Mike, or within the game, knowing that if a returner changes, this returner might like this return more than another return. Because at the end of the day, I'm, we're not on the field as coaches. The players, they bring the calls to life. So it's our job as coaches to put them in the position to where they can play fast, be free, and be comfortable so they can excel at their, their particular role at that play. Rather than being like stressed about, hey, I have to go catch the ball, I got to be here, just play fast, great catch mechanics, and be fearless and get vertical with the football. Well, one, you try to eliminate his attempts of having the football. That's the number one thing. And then you watch him. Nixon is a fearless north-south returner. It was it was really cool to see how he brought a, a, a spark to their special teams unit last year in regards to the return game. And that's a big credit to Rich Passaccia bringing him in from Las Vegas to Green Bay. But he's a fearless north-south returner, has great break tackle ability. Uh, he could go east, west, or north, south with the football. So you have to cover the whole field when you go cover kicks versus him. And then towards the end of the season, he he started off and he played really well later in the season as a punt returner. So we have to limit his attempts if any way possible. Then when he does get an attempt, we have to make sure that we're running our feet through contact and we're we're making sure we're getting him to the ground because he does a great job, has great lower body strength when it comes to breaking tackles. And he's just another offensive threat for those guys before their quarterback touches the football. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.